Hey guys, today I'm back in Scrap Mechanic and I want to try making an explosion powered engine. Now I saw a comment asking me to do this and I thought it would be pretty fun. Now I don't have any idea where I'm going to start with this, so I'm just going to get right into it. So I'm just starting off in the sandbox in the flat world here and I'm building up a bit of a concrete pad and what I want to do is just try working with the explosives. Now I found these two different types, there's a small one and a larger one, here I'm with the smaller one and I'm just going to hit it and that seemed to trigger it to explode. Now, it also exploded a lot of the concrete. I was a little worried about that, because concrete's decently strong, so if this is exploding it, is anything gonna work? So here I put a loose block on top of the explosive, and when I exploded it, you can see it did get launched into the air, which means it can produce some force, but... just literally melted into the ground. So, I just looked at its properties real quick, and you can see here it's definitely not flammable, as you'd expect and it's actually pretty strong and heavy, so I was very worried at this point that nothing was gonna work, but I found this Concrete Block 3, which has a really high weight, and I was kind of expecting weight to correlate with strength here, since that's how most Unity games work, not sure if it's how this works, but it seemed to not work like that here, because when I put it on top of the explosive, it melted into the ground right again. So I put down the explosive again, and what I wanted to do was put down a large rotating arm, because I was thinking maybe if the arm was unconstrained, if it could just rotate however it wants, it's possible it wouldn't destroy itself. I was definitely not sure if that was going to work, but it's all I could think of at the time. And here when I went to set off the explosive, it definitely made it rotate, but it also destroyed half of the arm. So, kind of worked, but definitely not as much as I'd like. So I went through all the blocks at this point, and I ended up finding out that the Metal Block 3 seemed to have the largest durability, and I figured that having low durability may have been what's causing the concrete to explode so easily. So what I did is just grab that Metal Block, and I replaced most of the concrete with that Metal Block instead. And once I did that, you can see it still rotates just about the same. So I put down a little bit of a stand, put down an explosive on it, and when I hit the arm into the explosive, it instantly exploded and caused it to rotate. And none of the arm got destroyed, and when I tried it again here, you can see the same thing happened. None of the arm got destroyed, but it's rotating a lot faster than it was. So I put down a large explosive as well, just to see how it would compare to the small one, but the arm seemed to have a little bit more trouble causing it to instantly explode, so it didn't seem to be as easy to trigger. And you can see here as well, it just didn't really move any faster. So I sent it into the explosive again, and it still seemed to not be going any faster. So I realized at this point the small explosive was probably just the best way to go, since it's a little easier to manage, and it seemed to have a, almost exactly the same strength as the big one. Now I realized later on it might have been better to have that extra stability, so when I come back to this video at some point in the future, I'm going to take another look at those blocks, but for now I didn't do that, and I'm going to start working on the crankshaft. Now for this crankshaft, it's very similar to how I normally do it, and you can see I only have one crank on this crankshaft, and that's because I'm only going to have one piston. But that's just for testing. Now I'm going to use the piston that's actually in the game, just to make sure everything rotates well before I start going to some weirder piston designs. But here when I go to test it off the lift, you can see it just completely falls apart. So I put it back on the lift, and I realized the problem is I just didn't weld stuff properly. So I have to make sure to weld the second arm to the ground, and also weld the edge of the piston to the crank itself. And here when I give it a test, you can see it's stable for sure. But it's not rotating when I hit the button. And the problem is actually something that I had done in my last video as well. The piston needs to be on a bearing so it can rotate up and down as the crank itself moves up and down through its rotation. So I fixed that here, and now giving it a quick test, you can see off the lift, it kind of starts to sag down, but when I hit the button, it starts to push out and gives it a half rotation. So now that I had some sort of design that seemed to sort of be working, I wanted to start working on the piston itself. Now for this, I wanted to have a 3x3 set of metal blocks to hopefully take the force of the explosion and push the crankshaft with it. Now here I was going to put in the piston, but I actually had a small problem, and you can see here when I use the weld tool, everything is highlighted there. And that means that both the piston and the cylinder are being counted as one piece and not separate pieces. So they're going to be stuck together. So to hopefully fix that problem to have the piston be separate from the cylinder was make it outside of the cylinder or at least have its base not be connected to the ground at all. So the pieces always count as separate. Now this is a lot harder to do than I expected because I need to be very careful with how I position different metal pieces inside of each other so that they wouldn't accidentally connect to the wrong piece. But eventually I got that here. And you can see when I use the weld tool, the nine blocks in the middle are separate from the cylinder walls. And this means that it should be able to move separately from the cylinder. Now I connected up to the crankshaft, so I just had to add in a bearing, and once I did that I had to make a long arm going all the way to the crank, and basically I just got rid of my spacer, and then welded it up to the crankshaft itself. And now giving you a quick test here, you can see it is moving in and out, and this was a great start. But the crankshaft sort of fell apart on itself, and also when I started hitting the piston, you can see it got all glitchy and it ended up tilting back. So I was hoping the problem was just the broken crankshaft causing this, but when I went to hit the piston again, it also just tilted back and broke. Now the problem I realized is that I need some spacer blocks in the top and the bottom to prevent the piston from rotating down or up. Now here I only have the one at the bottom, so you can see it just tilted up and that caused problems. So finally I put the one on the top as well, and after I did this, 
For the most part, the pistons seemed to work perfectly and I had no problems with it getting stuck. So I wanted to try out using an explosion to push this piston instead of just my hammer, because if that didn't work, that was sort of a massive problem. But you can see here the piston ended up rotating multiple times, so I felt really good that this actually had some potential. Now I'm also replacing the spacers with mesh blocks instead of glass blocks like I had, because the mesh blocks have a little bit lower friction, which I was thinking was going to end up helping me. You'll see later on it actually has a negative effect, but I'll move to that later. And for now what I want to do is add in a second cylinder. Now to do this, I'm basically putting a second crank in 180 degrees out of the phase of the first one, and originally I messed it up a bit so it just sort of folded in on itself, but after just correcting it so that there's one large bar in the middle instead of two separate ones, ended up holding together and you can see here, as I get it off the lift, it ends up rotating just fine. Now this is sort of a problem because my two cylinders are going to be directly opposing each other, which means that ordinarily if there was just like an inline engine, I would want these 180 degrees out of phase. But since they're opposing each other, I actually want them on the same exact crank, since opposing it kind of has its own inversing effect. So this means that when the first piston is going to be pushing out, the second one is also going to be pushing out, and they're going to be pushing in at the same time. So this is sort of a problem, because that means I'm going to be delivering all of my force half of the time, and the other half the time I have no force being delivered. It should work, it's just a little weird, and later on I'm going to end up fixing that, you'll see. But once I ended up putting in that second cylinder and piston, I can also give it a test here to show you that the piston is separate from the cylinder, and I put in those spacer blocks as well, took it off of the lift, and gave it a quick test here. And as I push in the cylinders, you can see how they pull in and out at the same time, I think it looks pretty cool, but it definitely has some issues, like I just talked about, where all the power is being delivered half of the time, and realistically I want it to be staggered so that one's delivering power while the other one's returning back to its normal position. Now I also had quite a few issues where the cylinders were ended up binding on each other, and I wasn't sure why this was the case, and they just would not move at all. But it seemed to fix itself once I got rid of the slits I put in the sides of the cylinder walls to make it easier for me to show on video. And after running it here using a controller to automatically rotate the crankshaft, you can see nothing got stuck, so I figured that was probably just the solution to the problem there. So the next thing I wanted to focus on was some way to be able to control the bombs so that they'd explode at the right time, and the first thing I was thinking was some sort of dropper. Now for this I just put a bomb really high up and dropped it in, and it didn't immediately explode, you can see it bounced first before it did. So it made an even taller tower, and this time told it to go off, and you can see here, it ended up instantly exploding the second it hit the ground. Now I don't know, just something about dropping it from really high height, I mean it works, but I had another idea that I thought might work out better and might make it easier for me to store bombs. And for that, what I was going to do is have two different pistons opposing each other in the back of the big piston here, and they're going to push on the explosive canisters themselves, and then cause it to explode, like, immediately. So putting in one piston like that here, and now I'm on the other side, and I'm putting in that other piston. And after I got those in place, I put down an explosive canister to get ready, put in a switch, connected it to the two of them, and when I hit the button here, you can see they do compress on the canister, but they don't make it explode. And I figured the problem is that they're probably just not moving fast enough, so I turned up their speed all the way, and here when they hit the canister, they do make it go off, but it takes some time first. So I also turn up their range as well, and once I did that, it immediately explodes the second that it hits the canisters. So now that at least I had some idea of what I was doing there, I wanted to finish off by putting the last two cylinders, since I'm going to need them anyway for testing. And these are actually really similar to how I did the first two cranks, except these are rotated 90 degrees out of phase. And the reason I did this is that as the crankshaft rotates, each of the cylinders is going to fire once, so that'll have four different explosions per rotation. Now, connecting the crankshafts directly together didn't really seem to work, you can see it just falls apart here. So what I decided to do instead was have two separate crankshafts, and I was going to find some way to be able to connect them together. Now, the other reason I wanted to have two separate crankshafts instead of one big one was so that I could put the cylinders physically further apart from each other, because I was a little worried the explosions would be kind of carry between the other ones and cause bombs to go off prematurely, or potentially go all the way up the chain to where I'm going to be storing the bombs. So I just decided it's basically the part is probably the best way to go here, and I finished up the one crank, and you can see now I'm putting in the other cylinder, and once I did that, I started working on the piston as well, and it's very similar to how I did the other two, so I'm not really showing it too much, but once I got everything in place, I just had to connect it up to the crankshaft, and this is where problems started to occur. And you can see here, I actually had to cut a hole in the top of the cylinder, and the reason for this is that you can see this piston needs to sit on top of the cylinder slightly, and it's going to need to fall down into it. Now, with the crankshaft being rotated the way it is, it just kind of has to be that way, unfortunately. So I ended up just sort of dealing with that, and also fixing up the piston and cylinder combo since they're a little bit misaligned. But once I got those all in place, you can see here it rotates just like the other ones do, except it has a little bit of a weird starting condition. And since I actually do need that top cover to be on top of the cylinder, what I'm going to do here is put in sort of a three block wide sort of roof on the piston, so that as I put push this piston into place, it sort of covers everything up, and that basically just makes me a top of the piston so that nothing can fall out or anything like that. So once that was all in place, it was time to add in the last cylinder, 
And I'm not going to show too much of this again since I've already shown this about three times now. And once I got that all in place, I made sure to leave the top of it open. But there's actually a problem now. And it's because this piston needs to start below where it normally does instead of above. And this means it's actually impossible for me to put in the cylinder properly. So the only way I can really do it is by having it go straight up and down like this and pushing it into place using the mallet or just something like that. Now, I was kind of worried this was just going to be really annoying to set up every single time. But I ended up making the piston like this, just like I made the other ones, and I welded it onto the crankshaft like this, and deleted the lift, and gave it a quick test. Now as I hit it, you can see it actually was starting to fall the wrong way, but once it falls in place, it's facing the wrong direction, so I had to mess with it for quite a while until it eventually works out, but I just didn't like this, so I ended up deciding to delete it, because I had a better solution anyway. Now what I was thinking was I could just mirror basically exactly what I did with my first two pistons. Now if I do this, I'm going to need some way to rotate the entire crankshaft after the fact, and then I'm going to need to connect it up to the first crankshaft so that they'll still be 90 degrees out of phase of each other and all that. But I was willing to do that, because it's just so much easier to set this all up without having to deal with pushing pistons in the right spot and making sure their heads are the right way. It was just going to be a lot easier. So here I'm putting in that rotational system like this, and basically it's just two pistons that sort of push blocks straight up, and you can see how it rotates the crankshaft as they push up. Now I ended up having them extend a little bit too far, so I fixed that problem and ran it again here. And once I did that, it all seemed to work out, so to put in the locking system, I'm starting out by having three pistons on the original two sets of cylinders. And as I hit the piston here, you can see how those pistons are rotating. And what I'm going to do here is sort of have a detent in the one side, and the other side I'm going to have a pin, and that pin is going to push into the detent, and they're going to sort of mesh together, and it just gets stuck. So here I'm putting that in place, and they don't perfectly mesh immediately, so I have to mess with it a little bit with a sledgehammer. But once I get it here, you can see that they end up meshing. And when I end up getting rid of all the support mechanisms, I just drop a bomb in place and give it a quick test here, make sure it still works. And once I do, you can see the entire crankshaft starts rotating both parts of it. So I felt really good at that point and I wanted to start working on the bomb timing mechanisms. So to work on those timings, what I did is put in a sensor like this, and it's going to detect whenever the crankshaft is directly in front of it. So here when I stand in front of it, you can see it instantly explodes the bomb I put in place. But really what's going to happen is when the crankshaft rotates to the right place, those pistons are going to compress the bomb and cause it to instantly explode. So to hopefully create a little bit of a hopper here, what I'm doing is putting in a bunch of bombs like this next to a ramp, and as they compress in one of the bombs, I'm hoping that the next bomb is going to be able to slot right in place, and just kind of keep the flow going. But instead, it works, like it does make the crankshaft move but ends up just exploding all the bombs and deleting my ramps. So yeah. Instead what I was gonna need to do is have a long corridor where there's just no bombs at all to hopefully separate them out far enough that they won't explode the other ones. So I put that in place here and you can see the bomb I put on the end didn't explode but I got shot way, way far out. That should have been fine though, as long as it doesn't explode, I can hold them in place and that's not really a problem. So I built up that long corridor a bit more, put on some nice walls on it, and now I'm building a little bit of an L shape here, I guess a reversed L. And the bottom part of the L is actually gonna hold all of the bombs in place. I can keep those close together since there's really no threat those exploding, but I just need to make sure they're separated from the bomb that is exploding. So I put in a piston as well to push all those bombs in front of another piston, which is going to shove one at a time down the long corridor and get it in place so that the smaller pistons at the edge of the big piston are going to hit it. Now that was very confusing, so I'm hoping the visuals are going to end up being a little bit better than that. And I'm going to put in another piston at the end here, and what this one's going to do is shove down one bomb at a time down the long corridor and hopefully once it reaches those two smaller pistons in the ends, they'll be able to compress on it and explode, and I'll get the timings all right with it. Now I had some problems with bombs sort of shooting out of this mechanism, as you can see here. Now, they did get shot all the way down to the end using the other piston, but they were kind of getting hit out a lot, and I think I was putting a little bit too much force on them, and they had a little bit too much play. So to fix those problems, what I'm doing is shrinking the corridor from three blocks wide to two blocks wide, since that's the width of the bombs. And I was a little worried about constraining them this much, but it seems like giving them too much room is more of a problem than giving them too little room, so this should be fine. And you can see here, they're barely moving at all. So now as I shove a bomb down the corridor, it does go all the way down, but then it recompresses on the bomb, and then explodes. Now I'm going to fix that problem using some timings like I'm putting in here. So what I have right now is whenever the sensor detects that the crankshaft's in front of it, it sends a signal, and then it immediately stops sending that signal as soon as the block isn't in front of it anymore. Now this is sort of a problem, because it means as the crankshaft's rotating faster, that signal is getting shorter. And that means I can't really nail down exact timings very well, since they're constantly changing dependent on the speed of the engine. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is put in a single memory bit, and it's going to turn on as soon as it sees the crankshaft in front of the sensor, and it'll only turn off after a set amount of time that I can use using a timer block. Now I'm going to set it to be 500 milliseconds here, and once I put that all in place, you can see as the crankshaft goes in front of the sensor, it immediately turns on the triple XOR gate setup, 
but it turns off after 500 milliseconds always, no matter how fast the crankshaft is going, which means that I can basically nail down timings perfectly, and as soon as I get it right, it should always be right. And I wanted to give it a quick test here by loading in some bombs, and I realized that there are rare circumstances the bombs still can leap out. This was really rare though, and I ended up even limiting that more by fixing the timings. And now I'm just giving this one final test. You can see as I start to rotate the crankshaft in front of the sensor, it does send a bomb down the corridor. And this even works, it ends up rotating the crankshaft, but all the other bombs I loaded in also exploded. Now, I wasn't really too concerned about that since I didn't have the timing set up properly yet, so I figured maybe it was just like I was loading a bomb at the wrong time. So I ended up just deciding, copy what I had onto the lift, make sure I made a bunch of copies of it, and then copied it over to all of the cylinders. Once I did that, I loaded in a bunch of bombs, and my game got very laggy after this, as you can see here. And once I did this, I started to rotate the crankshaft. I was hoping to get some good rotation out of this, and eventually here, I ended up getting a bomb to explode, and the crankshaft did rotate, and in fact, it continuously rotated, which was even better. None of the bombs really made it dead stop or anything. But I noticed there was a small problem, and that seemed to be some of the bombs weren't exploding, but were getting loaded in. And I realized I just forgot to set up some of the pistons, so I only had two of the four pistons actually doing anything. But when I fixed this problem. Here I have a really slow motion version of it. All of the bombs exploded on the left side. And this is a problem that I saw earlier too, but it really seemed that once all the bombs exploded, it seemed to just dead stop the machine. Which also made me think, the problem may not have been that the explosion inside the cylinder caused all the other explosions to happen, but rather all of the other bombs exploded randomly, causing the bomb inside of the cylinder to explode at the wrong time and dead stop the engine. It was an interesting problem and I wasn't exactly sure I was going to deal with it, but I realized putting in a little bit of delay seemed to mostly fix the problem because it seemed to isolate the explosion inside the cylinder much better from any potential accidental explosions outside of the cylinder, so even if I lose an entire piston, the engine should still be able to go. Now you'll notice here I'm also putting in four more timer blocks and what these are going to do are constantly loop a signal around so that I'll be able to have four unique states for the signal to be in. Now what I'm going to try to do is replace the sensors with this direct timing system to give me even more control over exactly when the bombs are firing. I was very worried at this point that the problem was just that there's too much irregularity with the sensors and the crankshaft and having a completely separate control system was the best way to go. This was a problem because now I had no connection to the engine at all. So, no matter how fast the engine is rotating, the bombs are going to be shooting at the exact same rate, which should be fine since the engine should end up meeting that rate perfectly. And sometimes here, you can see bombs weren't even reaching where they were supposed to, so they just wouldn't even explode quite right. And I realized the problem was just that things were weird with the bombs here. When I put the bombs in this orientation, they bounce straight out of the cylinder and don't blow up. But if I put them in this orientation, they at least seem to work out fine and get dead stopped. And it was pretty much different for every single cylinder, and the physics were just not really consistent. So as a last ditch effort to get this to work, I tried increasing the distance of the corridor to separate the explosions of the bombs inside the cylinder from where all the other bombs were being stored, but this still just did not seem to have any positive effect, and the bombs weren't even really making it to the end before they got slowed down. So I figured I could stack more pistons on this to make it work or something, but now that it was just making it even more complicated, and the problem was that it already was too complicated. So I went for a simpler system, I didn't delete what I had yet, but I basically was going to, and instead what I wanted to do was have basically a big tube the bombs are going to fall down, and then on top of that tube I'm going to have another storage tube of bombs, and a piston that can push those bombs out of the tube, down the larger tube, and then get exploded once they hit the bottom. So it's similar to what I showed earlier in the video with that test. I knew I was going to have problems with bomb storage here because, well, as you'll see, things are kind of problematic. As I put in a bomb like this and then try to drop it down, if I try to load more bombs in, the bomb on the bottom already exploded because it got triggered by falling too far. So I need to have a limited sized tube to be able to store these bombs in. And here I figured out I could basically store four bombs in this tube, and that's exactly what I did here because that's all I could really fit. And I tried putting in a piston and again a switch like this, so when I hit the switch, it pushes out the bombs and falls down that long tube. And it does work, it's a very repeatable system, it seems to have basically no problems at all, it just has a bomb storage issue. Now I have some ways of fixing this, and what I'm thinking is having multiple of these droppers drop into the large tube, so they'll be able to store in more bombs overall, but each one of the small tubes will still only have three bombs. Now, again, this isn't exactly a perfect system, it's a little bit cumbersome, but it should work. For this simple test here, I'm just going to have one dropper dropping into the large tube, I'm going to try to fit in four bombs on each one. So I'll be able to get four rotations of the crankshaft out of all of these explosives. 
Now the last explosive you can see is actually sticking out of the tube slightly, and it's kind of funny, but it's really just ended up being the best way to do this, because otherwise if any of the tube larger, they'd have a really good chance of exploding once they hit the bottom of the tube and ruining everything. So to give it a quick test here, you can see it doesn't really work. In fact, explosions are happening on the top of the towers, which means that all of the explosives are going off at once, and that's really bad. And moreover, you can actually see the crankshaft has just decided to stop rotating entirely. Just it completely stuck. And when I looked inside to see what was happening, if you remember those mesh blocks I put in earlier, those were the problem. The mesh blocks were exploding and just completely melting, and then the pistons were able to tilt back and forwards like we saw earlier in the video. So I had to replace those with the metal blocks instead, which I knew wouldn't explode. And here once I did that, it was better, but I still had some pistons stuck, so I had to fix the rest of those, and I was back to loading in the bombs. Now you'll notice I'm only stacking three bombs in each cylinder, and this is mainly because if I have too many bombs in the cylinder like you saw before, they just explode. So three seems to be about the limit of when things basically never explode, they sometimes do, it's just really unlikely. And once I got that in place, the crankshaft started to rotate, but it was just acting weird, like things weren't exactly happening at the right time. Now you can actually see the bombs are exploding, and it's sort of rotating, but it ends up stopping sometimes and then restarting. And I think the problem is that my timings were a little off, and you can see the first two explosions happened perfectly. After that, they sort of fell further and further out of line, until eventually the pistons were firing in a way that directly opposed the rotation. Now I'd come back to this a few days later, and when you do that, these crankshafts end up deconnecting from each other, so I just had to make sure to reconnect them like this, but I actually connected them incorrectly here, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Here I'm going for another test, I basically didn't change anything at all, and I noticed that nothing really was happening. And there's definitely a big downgrade from yesterday, where things seemed to be working a bit better. So what I did is increase the timers from 250 milliseconds up to 500, or 400 milliseconds I mean, and what that's going to do is just increase the delay between each of the pistons firing, and I'm hoping a slower engine might perform better. And once I did that, it definitely seemed to be a lot better. You can see I'm getting a lot more continuous rotation out of the engine. It's still not perfect, but it's pretty good. And here I tried to get a nice artsy shot while I'm on top of one of the cylinders, but I ended up getting booted off by an explosion. And here while I'm in the grass, you can sort of see that I still get that rotation here, sort of works out, and while I'm on top of this chair, I realized what I did wrong when I connected the two crankshafts together. I actually didn't put any phase shift on them, so they were actually directly the same thing. So I had explosions firing at the wrong time, and it was definitely slowing me down a lot. And once I fixed that, it was a lot faster, right up until it slowed down again. And I'm not too concerned about this, since the engine actually did have a lot of power and it seemed to be rotating right, because what really seemed to be happening was since the engine's under no load, as more explosions go on, it just goes faster and faster, which means that the timings fall further further and further out of line, until eventually the pistons are firing at the wrong time and actually slowing down the engine slightly. Now this is okay, because then that means as the explosions go on, it sort of speed regulates the engine, but it's not perfect and it definitely would be better if I had a load on the engine to actively slow it down, because then the explosions here would be just rotating the engine as you normally would expect and it can go at a pretty good rate and deliver a pretty good amount of power. Now in this video, I don't quite have that done yet, because I'm actually going to be revisiting this in a little while. What I want to do is make some sort of vehicle or just something to run on this engine, and I think that'd be kind of funny, but for now, I just want to get the proof of concept done, and I think I got that here. It seems to be rotating pretty well. So guys, thanks for watching. Definitely really enjoyed this video. It was a lot harder than I thought. I was over, I think, 11 or 12 hours of footage. It's a lot more than I usually have in a video, but thankfully I got it done. I did spend an extra week on this just to make sure I got it as nice as I wanted it to be, and I'm glad I was rotating as well as it was. So make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below, and otherwise, until next time.